الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له والصلاه والسلام على رسول النبي الامي وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وأما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم My dear beloved brothers and sisters First of all we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to shed his blessing upon all the Mu'mini and we are saying hand of the, the Creator, the, the one who is worthy of worship and we are asking him to shed his blessing and rahmah upon the soul of all prophets from Adam alayhi salam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are asking him to guide all Mu'mini and in a state of protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that all oh, oh, who you believe be fearful of Allah have the aid of Allah in your heart and do not die but be in the state of his son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other place that we always Recited at the end of our salah, we say, "Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi akhirati hasana, wa hina adabana." Oh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us in this dunya the best, and gave us in the akhirah the best. That is our du'a, the du'a after. But there is a misconception that the other day one of our brothers were saying that this dunya is for kuffar and the other dunya is for the mu'mineen. So no matter which kind of a miserable state that we are living in, it is incumbent upon us to be in that kind of state. While the fact of the matter is totally different. When we are saying, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, O Allah gave us in this dunya the best, in the akhirati hasana, in the akhirah, the best that we can. Wa kinna ala bandar, and rescue us from the hellfire. The first thing that we are saying that gave us the best in this dunya. And the reality is that you cannot reach to that best say that the other dunya unless you find your pathway from this through this dunya. As Muslims, we are obligated to live among the rest of the humanity, to act according to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad to act according to the Quran and Sunnah. It shows that we are a better people. And if you look at the life of this Ashab, they were during the time of Allah radiallahu anhu, they were in a very luxurious state. They were living in a very better, good situation. And so they were doing their prayer, they were doing everything, but having that in mind that this dunya is so little if you compare it to the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us or who has promised us in the other dunya, that this dunya for Muhammadin is like a person. Compared to what is waiting for us. But on the other hand, for the kuffar, compared to what they would be waiting for, this dunya is general. Having that thing in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned one thing when he created Adam alayhi salam. He said that in Hawa, in your wife, I created your sound from you. 
So, you would have to see in, in her, or with her, you will be completed. As human beings alone, you are not complete. But when you are coming together with your wife, with a righteous wife, you will find sakina, tranquility in your life. So that's why one of the things that we should have in mind that the good things of this dunya is to have a good family. And when as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ and among the signs is that he created for you wives from yourselves that you may find repose in them and he has put between you affection and mercy so the secret of having a good life is to have a good wife and the secret of uh, having a good family is to have two things in here mawadda and rahma affection and mercy so both of them in order to have a good family it is essential in the life of the people in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in other places it describes the situation of a husband and wife as libas. Hunna libasu lakum wa antum libasu lakum. She is your garment and you are her garment. Why garment is being used? Why libas is being used? In reality, anything external to the body, any external existence to the body that is closer to the body, uh, that is very close to the body, or the closest thing to the body is the bus or clothing that is touching your body. The closest thing. So the husband and wife, according to Islamic tradition or Islamic culture, they should be so close as they divorce each other. And there is another reason for the divorce. The clothing is covering the body, whether it is for you, or good things. So a husband and wife is supposed to be so so much close to each other and cover up for each other. So that thing is an essential, an essential part of Islamic life. Even it comes up to the time that if a husband and wife cannot get, get along after all the conditions or the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in front of them, when they come to the state of getting divorced, still they are obligated. It is a farita on them to say good things about the, each other, rather than bringing up anything that is part of this offer shop. And when it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, when it talks about the creation of Adam alayhi salam, it mentions that هو الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وجعلنا منها زوجها ليسكن إليها. He is the one who has created you from a single soul and made out of that, out of that soul created his zawj or his mate, so he will find the state of sukun in tranquility. That is. The essential of having an Islamic life, to have a family with tranquility. How can we reach, that is, how can we reach to that point? It is uh, mentioned in the Sunnah and prophetic tradition. In the society that we are living in, usually TV and media are creating personalities for us. Especially for overall for our women and men. That is being injected 
thinking in their mind that how can you be so attractive, attractive to men so you will be something of an importance. The value of a woman becomes that how attractive she is to the men, not having her own identity. It is that it is the persona that has been created. And on the other hand, for men also, the idea is how many women have you attracted? So you will be a cool person. So again, there are two things that are being mentioned that how can you attract? But if you look at both of them, the dominant figure in these, in both of these statements is men. That women, how can, what can they do to be attractive to men? And men, how can they attract more women? Again, the dominant figure is men. So, but, and, and it, is, it is so common that even you see that in order to sell a car, unfortunately, a woman with very less clothing is trying to do the advertising. If they are selling a hamburger, a woman with almost naked is trying to uh, sell the hamburger to attract again, to show the people that she is cool and she is attracted to a cool person. And some of, unfortunately, our Muslim women also fall into this trap. And to them also it becomes like a big issue to watch Oscar and uh, Golden Globe and say, talk about how this and that were wearing, which had clothes and how many thousands of clothes, uh, how many thousands of dollars had they spent on their clothes. So that idea has been taken away and they are being put in a corner. At the same time, a woman, feminist realizing this issue, they are trying to give a personality to women in the Western countries. They are trying to free them from that idea of being attractive to the others. But again, since there's the goal is the caliber or the, the uh, measurement scale that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in there doesn't exist. So again, they fall into that trap of how can a woman be like a man? If if a man is doing so and so, a woman should be doing so and so. If a man is uh, doing work in the army or bearing an arm, a woman should do the same thing so that she, they will be equal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very much different or against this thing. Islam is mentioning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created men and women equal. They, they are created equivalent, but with different roles in their, in their life. There are certain things that has always existed in the communities, in the society, that had, for example, uh, women or anybody who had uh, a softer heart they would have been considered as womenish. And that thing considered to be a bad thing. If somebody cried, that thing is considered to be, oh, she is so womenish that she is, he is crying. He is so womenish that he is crying. What crying in Islam, if you come back to Islam, Prophet Muhammad when he was burying his child, he was crying. And somebody came to him or told him, Oh, Prophet of Allah, are you crying? Says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put mercy in my heart. I don't know what has happened to you. It is any human being, they have that affection. They are created with affection. But on the other hand, it, it, it is okay if somebody is angry. If a man is very much tough on their family, it is okay. He's a man that can run things. That thing was completely negated by Islam. 
Ashabul Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was saying in a hadith asking the Ashab that who is the powerful person, the most powerful person. Some of them say the one who is very good in the battlefield and different attributes were given to him. And he said, no, the one who subsides his anger, overcomes him his anger. So having been angry is not a great thing to be. And even Prophet Muhammad suggests that when you are angry, standing, sit down. When you are still angry, lay down. So you will overcome that anger that you are having. So it is for Muslims to keep the idea of Allah in their mind and get out of that cultural persona that has been, they have been given, that personality of that belongs to the culture that takes them away from Islam. The culture is okay as long as it falls along with or goes along with uh, Islam, with the tradition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subscribed and described for us. In Islam, having a family is very, very essential. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put a solution to the problems that could arise in a family. And some of the scholars have summarized it in three A's, or which is also being called triple A of, of family value in Islam. That inshallah in the second part of the book that I will be
showing her, her uh, love. And I completely forgot it. So this thing is happening daily. These mistakes happening from each and every one of us. And while Dr. Muhammad was paying special attention to his family, to his wives, and to his children, especially he looked at the time that even this, we all know about the story, that even at the time of the prayer, Prophet Muhammad even needed his prayer while uh, Imam Hussain was sitting on his bed. He didn't want to even hurt them. That is paying special attention to the children, to, the, to your family. The other one that we say is affection. Prophet Muhammad was the most affectionate person. He's showing love to everybody and especially to his family. When he was entering the house, he was kissing the forehead of their children. And he was showing love and mercy to his wives, saying salam to his wives, and asking each one of them what they have done, what, what was in their life. And he was clearly saying, tell your wives that I love you. How often do we say these things to our family? that we love you. The, that question has gone out of our dictionary most of the time. And the last but not the least is affection. It is, it is so essential to show your affection and also appreciation from something that somebody that has done something to you. One day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the Muslim. An Arabi came to him. A Bedouin came to him. And he bought a sack of grapes from the market. And he came to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was showing so much love with passion. And he was there and sitting close to him in front of him and taking one by one and put it in his mouth. And that one was not uh, gone that he was putting another one. And once he picked up two of them and put one in his mouth and brought Muhammad to his mouth and put the other one in his own mouth. And as soon as he put it in his mouth, he realized it was so sour. He spit it. He asked Prophet Muhammad to say, are all of them like this? Prophet Muhammad said, that all of them are like that. How come you didn't tell me? Say, you came with so much passion. You showed so much passion, love. How could I say something that will break that love in that happy face of yours? And that is called appreciation. And what One thing that we should teach our children is how to live with our acts. Be an example to them. And I will end up that example so it will be to all of us with a short story of the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the Asad was saying, a young man, he was saying, I was very much attracted or was happy to sit down with women and talk and chat. In the outskirts of Medina, I was talking to a bunch of ladies. They were laughing and talking. And Prophet Muhammad was in a by it. And say, Ya Amr, what are you doing? And I didn't know what to say. I was so ashamed. Also, I was embarrassed. I say, oh prophet, the robe of my camel has shredded. I, these ladies are fixing up that robe for me. So my camel will not run away. He looked at me, smiled, and left. Next day, I saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was going towards the masjid. I saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in front of me, far away. I slowed down. Letting him go to the masjid. I did not see him. I slowed down. And he even slowed more. Slowed down more. So 
he waited for me, he looked back. And I had to get to him. So he saw him, he was just saying, Oh, Amr. Kaifu Harari Jamalu. Oh, Amr. How is the situation of your animal? And I said, it's okay, Prophet. He said, nothing else. He said, the next day, I was going to the masjid again, and I saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming from right behind him. And I, when I saw him, I sped up trying to get close, fast to the masjid and stay in the back. But again, he was faster than me. He caught me by the door of the masjid. He again looked at me, Ya Amr, hey, Fahad al how is the situation of your camel? I was so embarrassed. I said, it's okay. And the next day, I was in Muslim again. I was I realized that Prophet Muhammad Sassan has finished his prayer. And I elongated my prayer by the power. He came sat by my side. He said, Ya Amo, don't make it too long, I'm waiting for you. And I said, I finished my prayer. And as soon as I finished, he looked at me again and said, Ya Amo, hey Bahad Jamal. And I was so embarrassed, I said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I have tied up the rope so much that inshallah will never run away from me. And that is a lesson that with not directly, he told them anything not directly, but taught him how to behave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that ability to act according to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and act according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And make our life an example to our children. And teach our children and the rest of the community with a finesse way that it will not offend them, but it will teach them how to live. <laughs> ربنا ولا تحملنا ما رفاق لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا حقنا من أزواجنا وزرياتنا قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله يعرفكم الله إن الله يعمر العدل والإحسان وإنتاء إلى القربة